is part of what you already have in place, which is zoning. And you can regulate through zoning. And you can probably take it a step further. Y'all may remember, some of you there on council, at the time when we were looking at zoning on uh, sexually oriented businesses, it's a similar type of concept. Um, you know, you can, re you can restrict the location near other types of uses. Um, you can regulate concentration of, and uh, kind of laid those out. I don't know if Rose, I, I had emailed this afternoon just kind of a, a beginning draft ordinance of a, a zoning change because it is a zoning change. It has to originate in, in the Zoning Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission. So really nothing you can do on it there. It has to go to them first with a public hearing. Um, and um, so that's, I mean, that's probably, I don't know if the right word is easiest, but it's, that's one pretty straightforward mechanism for regulating. The second, um, I really wanted your input on more, and that is permitting or licensing the facilities. Um, and again, it's, it's in the same kind of vein of what we, we talked about before is licensing and permitting sexually oriented businesses. Um, and there's various, um, we'll do various ordinances, you provided me some of the copies. And really, some of the ordinances that were really, I think, well written and detailed, but they were really geared toward, y'all probably heard the stories, there are certain cities that are using eight-liner <laughs> businesses as basically a means of, of tax dollars, not really tax dollars, but a means of income. And uh, so, but we can instead regulate by permitting and licensing facilities. And, and I just noted a few of the ideas of regulation. I mean, you know, making sure that the owners come in and register. Who are they? Who's the owners? Uh, you know, having a background check done on the owners. I would think that, that if they had a conviction of gambling in some other location, they would not be eligible. Um, you know, you can take it to the next, you know, step and say managers, okay? Who are the managers that are going to be managing the operation of the businesses? And are providing that a manager has to be on duty at all the times. So, and once again, check the managers. What is their background? Should they be in the business or not? Um, and then you can also take it a little bit further. You can uh, regulate more of the structure of the building. Real common is signage. Um, a number of ordinances say they want, you know, open windows so you can visibly see from the outside what's going on. Inside, you have to have all the, the gaming machines open to the public, can be visible to anyone. You can't have machines off that are only available to some people. Um, another one might be lighting. Um, and, I, and I, you might even be able to take it a little bit further. Uh, I don't pretend to be an expert on eight-liner businesses. Anecdotally, I've, I've heard that they're kind of a potentially a target for robberies because they generally have a fair amount of cash. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've kind of heard that. So you might require a certain type of, you know, you might require video cameras. Uh, and so, anyway, so so then there's the, so you're regulating the structure of it. And then there's other things. You can regulate the hours of operation, things such as that. Now, on that front, though, you know, and it's the same thing that we kind of had with, with the sexually oriented businesses that we looked at. You understand you're adding a, a fair amount of, of work on city staff. Uh, so before we, before, I mean, I can, I think I can draft a lot better ordinances than the ones I saw uh, and kind of checked around. But 
before I go down that path and, and draft that, I really kind of want to get some input and say, yeah, we want to do that, or, you know, maybe we don't want to put that burden on, on staff. So that's kind of what we're here today, not take any action, but give me some direction on what the council wants to do. So before we can actually draft an ordinance, though, do we need to go before planning and zoning, or how do we... Only on the zoning aspect of it. The, I, I kind of said a, a zoning, and it may not be the final version, obviously, but I kind of threw that out there that it has to go before planning and zoning before you can consider it. All zoning changes have to originate in the planning and zoning commission. Not originate, but be considered at a public hearing. So, depending upon timing of when that is when we can get it in the paper and the timing of when the next PZ meeting, it could be on their next agenda. And so that's, I mean, that's kind of a more, I don't know if I use the term, I will use it a little bit more of a passive regulation. Um, you know, someone comes in, wants to open up a business, just like we would look to see if, if the location of the business was complying with our zoning ordinance, well, we take it a little bit a step further, and not only does it have to comply, well, it has to comply with our zoning ordinance, but we have these additional requirements. So that's kind of like, I mean, that's, that's a different level, I think, of regulation of more actively regulating the operation as who's there, who's running it, you know, what's the facility, what's the construction makeup of the facility. What are the hours of operation? What are the safety uh, issues? I'd ask the chief to, he hadn't really seen it yet. I haven't asked him yet, but he probably has some ideas on, you know, what would be, would be reasonable to require from a safety standpoint. So planning and zoning would come up with some of these, uh, like distance and feet from that kind of stuff. And, you know, I mean, that, yes, I mean, and that's, and that is similar to an ordinance we've done before, but distance and feet, I mean, the bottom line is, is you can't, I mean, the A-liner business, if conducted properly, is a legal business. So, you can't just totally restrict and outlaw a otherwise legal business, but you can take steps to make sure that it's, not one that is operated legally, but also safely. Yeah, I really like the number one in your memo about requiring the owner to apply for a license or a permit. Mm -hmm. Then the background check is are, are done by our office. Mm -hmm. That would be something that they would probably pay for then. We would. We'd have to set. I mean, we would set a, a permit <coughs> fee. That permit fee would be reasonably set to and then on the basis of what we thought the cost and time involved in, in processing a permit. Yeah, what you were mentioning about if they have been convicted of illegal gambling, I mean, that's... I mean, I think, I mean, that would be one of the, it's not in there, but I would think that would, would <laughs> eliminate yeah. Your eligibility. Well, that's the dilemma you have if you go with the license and regulation side of this. Is okay, we have to do a background check, but then we have to have a checklist of what is an excluded person and what is allowed. When you start getting, you can get this thing can blow up quick to where it's a big monster trying to regulate it. And like you were saying, which might be impossible to regulate with the staff we have. Versus from a zoning standpoint, that's more cut and dry, it is what it is. It's kind of like a, a liquor license or something. You have to be so far away from schools, churches, um, residents, the people around you have to be notified if you're opening one. Um, that's kind of what you have to do for a liquor license. That looks like they added it to there. <coughs> but they're, but not selling, they're, not selling, they're not selling the liquor, but right. still that would be a, a good starting point to, <coughs> to keep one from popping up in the neighborhood or something. I just like that one one issue of 
uh, if, if they've been convicted of illegally running a game room for felony. <coughs> that would be one. Or any, or any felony. Yeah. You would you would describe it as really any serious, well, probably any felony, any ga any gambling offense. Gambling, I can see, but in any felony, would you run into? So now you're saying anybody has a felony can't open a business. If he has a DWI or something. I mean, well, if it's know, a you felony, you get into a situation where you know you're kind of blackballing somebody who may be trying to do something for the good. You know, it's not always a bad situation. So, like Keith said, we really need to think. I think about a felony is a pretty bad situation. <coughs> as far as the well, or how long ago did it occur? Yeah, yeah. You know, and we've done that before too. We we set a time limit. Have you been convicted of within the last ten years? Exactly. That's what I mean. You know, some people may have messed up at a young age, but it sticks on their record. And you know, you don't want to say well, no because of that. Uh, a time restraint or the distance from the last four years of their offense. <coughs> Let's say we go the zoning route. Is the one establishment that's still open? Are they? grandfathered out of it or well, does it work? Well, one, I have no idea which one that is or, or whether it would be prohibited or not under the zoning change, but yes, they would be grandfathered if they ever shut down um, then for 30 days or more they would lose their grandfather status. Now, they may be legally located now, I don't know. You know, and it provides that if you know if, if it's you're legally operating, and you know, and a church moves in next door to you, well, that doesn't affect you either. Doesn't doesn't affect you if somebody moves into, you know, if you're up and operating. Only your initial location, no, your, <coughs> your operation. Again, I mainly just, you know, I didn't want to go down the, the path of, of doing the licensing and permitting ordinance. From my standpoint, I mean, it's fairly time consuming. And I, and I go back to, I mean, I looked at a lot of different ordinances and I really didn't, I mean, some of them I really questioned whether or not they were functional. I mean, you know, if you don't, I don't think if, if you don't go through a process of, of explaining to your ordinance what's required, uh, I don't think they're very functional ordinances. This, uh, the sample zoning mm -hmm. mentions that if the, the zoning creates a non-conformance in, in 1.5, what is it? Yeah. Talks about how they can, they can remain in business for 12 months. That's right. As this, as this is drafted, yes, you're right. It does limit non-conforming uses. You can do that. You can. Um, so they would have 12 months if, for some reason, they didn't meet the zoning requirements. And after 12 months, if they didn't conform, they would have to city would have to take action. Right now, we're requiring to have a manager 
you know, so of that nature. Mm. Can't do all of it. We can do that through zoning? Some of it, not all of it. Like you couldn't probably do a background check, or right. we couldn't, or obviously we couldn't levy any tax on it, obviously, which that's not the purpose of that It's just discussion. Again, just trying to get, I'm trying to kind of get a feel for what y'all are looking for. Again, I can. When does zoning be? You can put it on, uh, on the zoning, you can put it on just as a discussion item, but with no action until it's published. And, and again, it's the opportunity for the public hearing before the zoning commission. And give zoning time to kind of toss ideas around and be ready for a little bit of a meeting after all those that are put in paper. Thank <clears throat> you. 